In this video, we're going to talk about what happens if you change the volume or pressure uh, with an ideal gas. So first of all, let's write the ideal gas law up here at the top. It is PV, PV equals NRT. NRT. Okay, so what is this? Well, here we have pressure is P, uh, your volume of your gas is V, N is the number of moles of that gas, R is the universal gas constant, and T is your temperature in Kelvin. So what this is, um, basically here, I'll just label this a little, here we have moles, uh, moles of your gas isn't going to change, if it expands or compresses, it's just going to occupy, you know, a different amount of space, so the moles of your gas won't change. R is our universal gas constant, it doesn't change, um, it's just a constant value, here I'll write actually, um, there's a few different ways to express it, we, uh, maybe one of them could be 0 0.082 um, uh, and this is liters per mole um, per Kelvin per Kelvin okay so that's just one of the ways to write it there's actually a couple um, depending on what you're doing you kind of will choose which units you use but anyways and temperature here is our temperature in, uh, in Kelvin okay so what happens here is we're gonna be given a problem let's um, let's go down here and write our problem um, let's say we have 50 liters uh, 50.0 liters, uh, let's say carbon dioxide, CO2, and this is at, um, this is at a pressure of one atmosphere, 1.00, or for short we just write ATM. Okay, so we want to find out what happens if we compress this, here we'll say, we want to take this and we want to compress it down, maybe it would be in a cylinder or something, and we just want to, we want to make this into five liters, we want to see what happens to the pressure. So, basically what's going on here is we have two variables. We have pressure and volume are going to be changing. And then we have all this stuff over here which is just going to remain constant. All right, the number of moles isn't changing, the temperature is not changing in this situation, and the, the universal gas constant never changes. So this is equal to a constant. I know a constant value. Okay, and the cool thing about this is if this is constant, if this is nRT is constant, that means um, P times V always has to equal the same thing, right? So these are uh, P times V uh, before the experiment and after the experiment uh, has to be the same value. So check this out. So if we write it like that, well, then we can say, well, you know, when we want to solve this, we want to have our initial our initial pressure, let's call it P1, and our initial volume, we'll call that V1. Um, because it has to equal the same thing, well, then our final volume, let's say P2, or sorry, our final pressure, let's call that P2, and our final volume would be V2. And all the stuff's staying the same, so we can kind of just ignore that for right now. Um, so let's start filling in values and see what happens here. Um, let's go back to red, I guess. So we have our pressure, our P1 is one atmosphere. So we have 1.00 atmospheres. And this is going to be times our uh, initial volume, or V1, which is 50 liters. 50.0 liters. Okay, cool. So now this is equal to our second pressure. Well, we don't know that yet. That's what we're looking for. So that's equal to P2 times V2 and so we're saying we've compressed this down to 5 liters so we can just say that 5 point uh, maybe 5.00 liters okay well that's simple enough all we have to do is rearrange this a little to isolate for P2 so if we just bring this this 5 liters down here or we could say we could divide both sides by 5 liters so 5 liters and just cancel that part out now we can see that well, our liters are going to cancel out. We're going to have 1 times 50 divided by 5. So just 50 divided by 5. And so our final pressure, our P2, is going to equal 10. And this is units in atmospheres. 10 atmospheres. Um, I guess we would, if we continued with our sig digs, we'd have 10.0 atmospheres. Here, let's just rewrite that. Uh, 10.0 AT. M. Perfect. So that's the answer. That's all we have to do. If we're just changing pressure and volume, this stuff remains constant because we're not changing it, and some of it's just always constant. 
Um, so that makes sense. And so it's just that simple. It's just P1 V1 equals P2 V2. So that's cool. But now what if we were say, uh, what if we were given the pressure one, so what if we let it expand and we knew what the final pressure was, but we didn't know how much space it occupied? Well, we can do that too. So let's take this, uh, what we have now, we have this compressed, you know, tube or cylinder of carbon dioxide, and let's let it expand a bit. Um, let's say mm, until it's at five atmospheres, we want to see how much space that would occupy. So again, we'll do this, and we'll switch colors again. Um, so we're going to do the same thing again, we'll have P1, V1, is equal to P2, V2. Okay, so now what we're saying, we're doing a new experiment. So now before this experiment, well, our pressure is 10 atmospheres. So let's write that here. 10.0 atmospheres and are multiplying by our volume, which our V2 was 5 liters. So we can write 5.00 liters. And this is going to be equal to, well, now we're going to let say, we're going to let this expand to 5 atmospheres for the pressure. So I'll write that here, 5.00 uh, atmospheres. And then we want to find out, the unknown here is the final volume. So this is times V2. All right, now we can do the same thing here, just rearrange to isolate now for V2. So we can divide both sides by five atmospheres. Uh, I think it's 5.00 atmospheres. And so that would cancel that out. And now here we can just do a little unit conversion, or I see, you know, sorry, not unit conversion, just canceling things out. Um, so we can cancel out these units, and then we can see this 5 divided by 5. So we can just cancel out a 5 and a 5. And we're left with 10 liters. So V2 is equal to 10.0 liters. And just remember, this is using the same sample that started at 50 liters. At one atmosphere, we compressed it down to five liters, and now it's at 10 atmospheres. And when we let the pressure off to five atmospheres, now it occupies 10 liters.